Robert, when we first see your character, he's wearing a cast and he has an interesting sex scene. How can you tell us about what can you tell us about that film? Um, well, I've, it's the first time I've filmed in a cast before. I can say I brought my own cast, therefore saving ITV money. I didn't bill it out for the day, and it's quite hard to have a sex scene with a cast on. I'll tell you that for nothing. So anyone who's broken their leg in real life now, going through it, my heart goes out to you genuinely uh, because it's virtually mission impossible. It's the it's the best form of safe sex I think available is is a cast on your leg. A really exciting first episode. This script must have just jumped off the page when you first read it. It is one of those when you get it, it was like high octane, non-stop, and I was like, wow, and I read it from beginning to end straight away. And, and for me, it, that's unusual, you know what I mean? It takes me ages to get through stuff, but this was one, I read one to three. It's brilliant, it's just constant. Nancy's journey, something always going on, car crashes, people dying left, right, and centre. Who doesn't want that? I hear you're going to be involved in a high speed... Not really in life. I don't want people to die left, right and centre in life. I mean in drama. Sorry. I hear your character's involved in a high speed car chase. How was that to film? That was actually very exciting, although very nerve wracking, because I had a £250,000 camera attached to the right wing door of the car and had to go through a set of pillars really fast. And that was me doing that. And when you've got something that projects about half a metre outside of the car, you're incredibly nervous. And I'm a terrible driver. And I did nearly smash it. Um, and that would have been the end of my career with ITV. This couldn't be more different to your role in Downton Abbey. Is that something you were looking for? Um, yeah, when I left Downton, I wanted to do some, try and do something completely different. You know, unfortunately, you don't always have the choice. So I waited a while, it's been seven months, and then this came and they offered it me, and I was delighted because it's contemporary. You know, it's a young cast, it's fast-paced, it's, you know, it's the complete antithesis to Downton. So it was, yeah, it was a perfect next job for me, I, I thought. Were you offered plenty of roles for baddies after Downton? I wouldn't say plenty, but there was a few. Uh, a few baddies and a few gay baddies as well, funnily enough. Um, so, but yeah, you want to try and move it away uh, and, and show that you can do something else, otherwise you get sort of pigeonholed as the go-to bad guy. The producers have said this is a series that could go again. Would you be interested in returning? Of course I would be. Um, just bought a new house, so I'd like to keep paying the mortgage on it and not be evicted. So if they did want me back, if I survived this series, if I survived this series, I would, I would be glad to come back. And it's great to film in Brighton. What a top city, top vibe. Good people, good place. It's a whodunit, and I hear that no one on set knew who the culprit was during filming. A lot of people didn't, but I did, because an email was sent to me by mistake, which had a breakdown and a synopsis of the entire six episodes. Um, so I remember the director on the first day giving a big spiel about, you're not going to know who did it and did it. And I went, Andy, it's Andy Goddard, great director. I went, Andy, mate, I already know. He's like, no, you don't. I went, sent to me in an email, said the name of the specific character, the certain individual, and he was like, oh my God, I can't believe. And so I actually knew. And I think Noel Clark knew as well. People should watch what they send on email trays, trails, trays, email trays. Mm.